Здравствуйте, товарищи, as we would say in Russian. Uh, I'm here um, standing by the entrance of the v Leningrad Choreographic School named after Agrippina Vaganova. Uh, who would think when I started taking ballet classes at the age of uh, eight that I would suddenly be able to study ballet in this famous school where the great dancers like Nijinsky, Karsavina, Anna Pavlova have studied and have honed their art just like I have been given the opportunity today. Today I have just come from the Kirov Theater wherein I was able to dance the lead role of Masha in the school's production of uh, Nutcracker. teachers here in this school and all the opportunities that I have been given so far I know that with his help I will be able to even dance even better and uh, put the Philippine flag on on the dancers map thank you very much from Leningrad the Sidania Twenty years. Has it really been that long? I'm actually in my 22nd season as a ballerina, if you count the two years I spent at the Kirov Theater after graduating in 1984 from the Russian Ballet Academy. And if you count the two years that I did in Dance Theater Philippines before leaving for Russia, that makes it my 24th season as a ballerina. But who's counting? But for me, this year that marks my 20th anniversary as a Philippine-based principal ballerina is the most important occasion in my professional career. It was that crucial decision to stay home and bring ballet to the people that has really made a big difference in my life. When I took my first ballet lessons, I was turning nine years old and had absolutely no idea what I was getting into. I was never a child prodigy. I did not have many of the physical qualities people usually look for in budding ballerinas. In short, mine is the classic story of an ugly duckling who grew up to be a swan. I was only 14 when I first met Japanese prima ballerina Yoko Morishita. It was then that I realized that an Asian woman based in her own country can excel in the international ballet scene. It was at about that time that I seriously considered ballet as my lifelong career. 
Studying in Russia completely changed my life. There I was, fresh out of high school, trying to cram into a two-year scholarship everything my Soviet classmates took eight years to learn. My body had to adjust to the weather and the very difficult training. My mind had to quickly absorb the culture and the language. I was emotionally vulnerable from being far away from home. But all the sacrifice eventually paid off because it was at the Vaganova School that I met my teacher and lifelong mentor, Tatiana Udalenkova. Как, именно как ученица прекрасная, потому что она очень восприимчивая, умная. Она понимает все, что нужно, она способная. И, конечно, она замечательная очень. Прекрасная, очень добрая, хорошая, отзывчивая и благодарная ученица. Это тоже бывает, в общем, не всем так везет. It was right after my state exams in 1984 that I was personally invited by Kirov Ballet's artistic director Oleg Vinogradov to join the company. Until that time, for over 200 years, the Kirov Ballet never had a non-Soviet member. This is why news of my entry was met with the same response over and over again. Ana inostranka! She is a foreigner. For two years, I danced with the Kirov and debuted in some of my most memorable roles, like the Diamond Fairy in Sleeping Beauty, the tragic heroine in Giselle, and my all-time favorite role, Kitri in Don Quixote, where I was first partnered by the Kirov's leading dancer, Farouk Rosimatov. At first, coming home to the Philippines to be based here permanently did not really seem like a realistic option for me. There just weren't that many opportunities that I would consider more challenging or more fulfilling as what I had already experienced abroad. But a grander plan soon revealed itself. I was still getting invitations to guests internationally, but I was also doing a lot of outreach tours all over the country. This soon became a wake-up call for me. Though I wasn't conscious of it then, I think it signaled the beginning of my personal mission of bringing world-class ballet to the people. Suddenly, becoming Philippine-based seemed like the perfect career path. It was the best decision that I have made and I've never regretted it. In 1994, fate took an unexpected turn, which eventually led to the birth of my very own company, Ballet Manila. From a fledgling group of 12 young dancers, Ballet Manila is now a full company of 47 ballerinas and dancers, and 65 regular students trained in the Vaganova method at our very own Ballet Manila School. I never expected it to come this far. There's this line in this movie that says, what do you do when your reality has far exceeded your dreams? What do I do? Well, I'm not yet retiring, that's for sure. The possibilities are endless. For now, I will stick to my tried and tested formula of choosing a goal, working hard to attain it, and taking it one day at a time. There is already so much to be grateful for. After all, it's only been 20 years. The best is yet to come.